Welcome to On The Chain. Read the brief carefully again. And something that I predicted is never going to happen now. I predicted that there was a chance, that a, a solid chance that the judge could split the baby. Mm-hmm. And that she could say that a cell by Ripple in 2013 to 2015 or 17, these specific cells constituted the offering cell of an unregistered security because the ecosystem is so young, there's no other independent developers, et cetera, et cetera. SEC did not go that route. They went with an all or nothing route. They're saying yep. they didn't allege specific transfers and i've kind of figured it out like if you take the the sell to greg kid right a lot of people in the xrp community know that he had an option contract he's been transparent about it um the sec is not going to allege that that specific sell is the sell of unregistered security because he's a sophisticated accredited investor and ripple can turn around and say exemption regulation d Right. He's an accredited investor. It's a private sell, private placement with sophisticated guy. It does not need to be registered. There's an exemption under. So they didn't go with that. Instead, they have two paragraphs that tell you everything you need to know. One says that and it's talking about past sales and it uses the past tense. And it says a, a purchase in XRP was a uh, purchase into a common enterprise with Ripple and all other XRP holders, blah, 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 i.e. a security. Then later on, or they uh, another time, it may be earlier, they say, talking about present day, a purchase of XRP is a purchase into a common, inter- is an investment into a common enterprise, blah, 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 blah. Basically, so all past sales of XRP, all present sales of XRP are securities. And the the SEC says, as an economic reality, all sales of XRP are unregistered securities. So that that is an all or nothing approach. Right. Which is and that and and John, it's interesting, you know, because Chip and I right from right from day one, you know, when this all started, you know, our perception of this was that the SEC was going to take that approach. Um, and it's interesting that that's, you know, kind of what's developed at this point. And I remember the reason, yeah. And, and I still think there's something going on behind the scenes that we're not privy to from a political, you know, perspective. There's something bigger happening as to why, why it happened when it happened, the way it happened. And now they have this Gary Gensler in place that is, you know, when Hinman was there, Hinman wouldn't have, you know, necessarily taking this enforcement you know uh perception uh the way uh the way we're seeing gary gensler do it yeah. you know so it, the timing of it it's very i still think it's very strange you know but I'm, I'm glad you're referencing and bringing this up now because the sec just at this point in time and that that's kind of how you know i see it is that they don't there's they have no incentive at this point to to settle they have no incentive you know, other than they're going to keep, they're going to keep going. They think they can win it. I mean, it's, that's kind of a strange, you know, reality at this point. Right. Well, yeah. And, and you guys were right and I was wrong. And, and I don't know. Sorry. Say that again. (laughs) What? (laughs) Hey, I can admit, dude, I'm wrong sometimes. Right. So, uh, you guys were right and I was wrong because, and I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about. If you recall the last time I was on your show, I said that, listen, we don't, we haven't seen the SEC brief yet. We haven't seen all the evidence yet. And I actually predicted that the SEC would have a couple gems against Ripple. And I said it may be a couple bad days of publicity for Ripple. I don't know if you remember me saying that. I said, you know, we haven't seen all the evidence and there's got to be more that I'm missing. Now, that was an assumption I was making. Like, this can't be it. And then I read the the summary judgment and I said, holy shit, (laughs) there's nothing there. Like there's no more egregious conduct behind the scenes. There was, you know, it was, well, here's an email. Of course, no XRP holder would be privy to this stuff. Here's an email where Chris Larson said, I love it because an employee said, hey, XRP holders like something, right? 
or this or that. Well, none of that stuff is out there. All that complaint says, guys, is that Ripple promoted the shit out of Ripple. And Ripple promoted XRP. That's it. That's the case. Uh, And they want the judge to assume that all that promotion was successful. And that we listened to that promotion and we then were led to view XRP as an investment because of Ripple and because of what they're going to do. But they don't make that connection. If you remember, it was the connection that they were going to make was an expert. I'm not going to name his name. All right. And I don't want you guys to either, please. But expert number one, the guy that like I filed the amicus brief, the, the application to be heard of. And it was that's they responded to throw me off the case because I named his name. And then they threw all those old main tweets of mine. Remember all that crap? So oh, yeah. I, that was their expert. Like he was going to be or she was going to be uh, the person who said XRP holders had to rely on this because there's no, you know, non-investment use for XRP available or there's this or that. Well, to my surprise, the SEC did not rely on any expert. They didn't rely on the price appreciation expert. They didn't rely on expert number one, who I was most interested in. So they don't have that connection. Instead, they have, look, Look at all this promotion. But even all that promotion, guys, isn't that much. Like one of the things I'm going to address in the amicus brief, and to all the people out there like, John, don't give them an insight. I mean, listen, it's going to be filed in a a couple weeks, so I'm not letting the cat out of the bag. But they make a big deal that, that, look, at one point, Ripple showed you how to buy XRP on their website. Okay, Guess who else did that? You guys know? NBC. CNBC. They CNBC ran twice. videos All of, of it. it. Yeah. They, they had written articles of it and they had videos of it. It was now, a big deal. Oh, yeah. It was so a I'm big saying deal. To you is so, so just an XRP purchaser, if they were viewing it as an investment, they may have gotten it from Brian Kelly from Fast Money, who said, by the way, XRP is not a security while he said it. That's right. So yep. I'm just saying is that. That's the the I just don't see, you know, how the judge could make that underlying, you know, connection that somehow we did it. Plus, you know, all, obviously all the non-investment uh, uses of XRP. And, and we're going to address that. We're going to address how I don't know if you've seen the tutorials on the XRP ledger. There's tutorials on how to code like a yes. moron like me could learn how to code, man. I mean, can you imagine Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.